beautiful people. I hope you have some friends with you because these Minecraft myths are so terrifying you don't dare watch them alone. Put your headphones on because the first myth we're starting with is... What does wake up mean? If you've ever beaten Minecraft, you have seen these words at the end of the credits that roll after beating the Ender Dragon. Wake up. So, you know me, I immediately began to research the web to find what the game really meant by this. And what I found left me full of terror. This theory states the entire game of Minecraft is a dream within oh, Steve himself. Okay. You might be thinking that I am just pulling a prank on you guys, but I'm dead serious. Let me explain. Steve is dreaming, and he has no control over his nightmares, which originally brought him to survival at the beginning of his dream. He has no power himself to wake up from a dream that is never ending. In fact, he's stuck in this loop. No matter how many times you die in the game, you just respawn. The odd background noises that you hear in Minecraft that appear out of nowhere and are sporadic throughout your playthrough are theorized to be from the outside world. Family and loved ones trying to reach Steve while he's in an endless sleep. Steve is trying to escape this world while you and I are just playing his story. It is possible that Steve will never see the outside world again, but instead be stuck in Minecraft to mine, die, and repeat his dream over and over again until the end of time. The creation of ghasts. Have you ever wondered where everybody's least favorite flying pale monster came from in Minecraft? Were they born naturally within the depths of Minecraft's netherworld? I do not think so. Some even theorize that they were created by something truly ghastly. Once the ancient builders found their way to the nether, they continued their studies into the resources that were brought forth from the fiery dimension. We looked over the possibility of soul sand being the souls of these ancient builders, but in an alternate theory, this soul sand had already been there for generations. The ancient builders began using this soul sand to modify creatures from the overworld until they were beyond human comprehension. They stole a certain mob from the overworld and began to experiment. They used the remnants of soul Soul sand without knowing the hidden capability of souls being locked within and created monsters. Unknowingly, they created their greatest demise. These mobs turned into enormous pale creatures that shot fire from their mouths and flew with tentacles that spread far beyond the wingspan of a normal aquatic creature, and its face took the shape of a man. This formation was due to the spirits of the dead within the soul sand taking over the original mob's body until it was no longer a creature that was recognizable. It had become a monster. What was the mob? The terrifying creature of the nether was mutated from two familiar mobs in the overworld, the skeleton and, you won't even guess it, the dolphin. Phantoms are just resurrected ender dragons. Recently, I talked about the myth that phantoms are secretly just a hallucination. But I just found a darker theory. There is speculation that phantoms in and of themselves are actually resurrected ender dragons from the illagers. You may also be thinking it makes no sense considering phantoms look nothing like the ender dragon. But if we dig a little bit deeper into the history of Minecraft, we can see that the illagers themselves were looking for a way to find the ancient builders through their dark magic. The Illagers were following the footsteps of the ancient builders who went to the end and returned with Elytras. They wanted to recreate what their masters had created. And in doing so, they made abominations from the rotten membranes of past Elytras left behind the builders. They combined these with the leftover Ender Dragon remains and created the Phantom. This myth is the war for resources. There's a massive theory in the Minecraft community that there was a war that took place in Minecraft's past. But not just any war though. This battle included the forces from all over the Minecraft world. We're talking the Nether, Overworld, and the End, all fighting for resources. Think Avengers Endgame scale, but bigger. The biggest question you and I are all asking though, how did this war begin? It all started when the ancient builders got tired and complacent of their world and decided that it was time to start journeying further beyond their own dimension. This led them to the nether and eventually the end. With all of the resources that they had stolen from the alternate realms, this brought anger to the creatures that lived there. And if you look around the world of Minecraft, you can see abandoned nether portals that have been partially destroyed and left to rot away. Did you ever stop to wonder where they came from? These portals were actually the gateways that the nether creatures created in order to storm the overworld to attain the resources that they had lost previously from the ancient builders. Maybe we as the player being the descendants of the ancient builders are understandably in the wrong and have not paid for the sins of our ancestors. Maybe that is why all the creatures from the other dimensions attack us on instinct. What do you think?
And maybe it's all our fault that the end is a barren wasteland with Endermen, dry of every resource other than chorus fruit. And taking it another step further, maybe it's even our fault that piglins initially want to kill us upon instinct. What if it's because we actually deserve it? This is the creation of the Wither. The Wither is definitely Minecraft's most terrifying naturally spawning boss. But have you ever wondered where the Wither actually came from? We've discussed a few theories on this channel, but I just uncovered something new. This myth states the Wither is not just one mob, but the culmination of thousands of dead souls formed into one singular entity. You may be wondering where these souls came from, and the answer leads back to the ancient builders we spoke of previously. The ones who created all of the structures that are unexplained, such as the temples, abandoned villages, and even strongholds. The theory states that the ancient builders sought out the nether in search of new resources but were quickly greeted with death by the creatures of this Minecraft underworld. And their spirits seeped into the soul sand that we know of and have been stuck in a dormant, angry nature for thousands of years. And one day, a Minecraft player named Miner36 decided he was going to build with the blocks of the nether and release the culmination of anger that was brought from the souls of the restless spirits trapped within that soul sand. The Wither was born and began to wreak havoc across the entire Minecraft world. The scariest part is that even after a Wither is defeated, there is an unlimited amount of souls trapped in the soul sand of the nether ready to take the previous Wither's place, which means infinite destruction to this planet. They are basically immortal demons, meaning no matter how many times you kill them, they're just going to be reborn, but with a different conscience. Vexes are created from the souls of Alays. They help you complete various tasks as a builder and gather materials for you as you continue your journey. But sadly, if you are a fan of this channel, then you would know that this mob is home to only the darkest conspiracies on the internet. We have discussed a couple of these myths here, but recently I discovered some new information that I think will finally answer the question of where they came from. And it all starts with the theory that the forgotten race of citizens known as ancient builders passed away and were stuck in the overworld as souls left behind. If you look here, you can see that Alays look very similar to the Vexes that we know that Illagers summon. We also know that Illagers were banished from the villages due to their experimentation with dark magic. Where do we find Alays? They are always found in pillager outposts and woodland mansions in groups of three within cages. These Alays have been forced into cages by the Illagers so that they can be forced into a new creation, the Vexes. Now let's listen to the Alay. And if we play both of the audio tracks together, it is almost 100% clear that the Alay is one of the Vex counterparts. Just thinking about how these Vexes contain multiple souls of Alays is enough to make my skin literally crawl. The myth of the missing one. Ah, Illagers. They are behind so many of the darkest, deepest conspiracies in Minecraft. We have talked at length about where they came from, but recently I started to wonder how exactly do they do what they do? I mean, if it wasn't for their dark magic, they would just be a group of middle-aged villagers. But that's not the case, is it? They are secretly behind the origins of countless monsters and myths, all because of their dark magic they possess. So that begs the question, where did they get this magic? Are they born with it? Did they forge it from lapis lazuli? Did they gather it from the remains of their raids on the villagers? Or maybe the ancient builders had some kind of magical capabilities? I say no. You don't learn something without a teacher. This myth started long ago. It states that there was an entity that brought life to all of Minecraft before Steve or even the ancient builders that came into existence. This thing taught the Illagers what they now know about dark magic, a thing now known as the missing one. Saying his name gives me goosebumps. Why do you think I have all these plushies here? The plug for firemarks.com? I'm not that guy. The Illagers are in constant search of the missing one, the one that taught them all that they know. Remembering that the missing one brought them food, shelter, and life was all they needed to follow him. The last thing that this entity did before it left was create a portal to the end. The Illagers watched in awe of his creation, and then he vanished. But he took the portal along with himself. So where does that leave the Illagers now? Well, 
you may notice within the Woodland Mansion something strange. Illagers are trying to replicate portals resembling the end portals you may find in strongholds. But why? Because ever since the missing one left, the Illagers have been trying to recreate the portal that they do not understand, which is why they have a recreation of the end portal built in wool inside of their mansions. They are in constant search of him, and they will be looking until the end of time. Some say that if you stay in the end for a long, long time after beating the Ender Dragon, the music that plays in the background slowly glitches out and turns dull. And once you are so freaked out you are on the verge of leaving and jumping through the portal, the missing one appears and guides you to a dimension beyond your wildest dreams. The Origin of Striders If you have been to the Nether in the newer versions of Minecraft, you will have noticed Striders. You know, the red creatures with whiskery strands of hair, long burnt legs, and swooshed faces. Where in the world are these alien-like creatures from? This theory states that many years ago, the overworld had run dry of resources and the villagers were desperate for some sort of way to fix their lack of lifestyle. They discovered a way to enter the nether but were unaware of this new realm. The villagers turned to the first witches of the world for answers on how to survive in the harsh, heated landscape. The witches were previously banished from the villages due to their dark magic alongside the villagers. So they took this opportunity to get back at the villagers who left them to die. The witches gave them the first prototype of fire resistance potions, knowing full well that they were made to transform and malform the villagers that drank them. The villagers were unaware of this treachery and headed back to the nether to begin their search of the new realm. The villagers one by one began drinking these potions. They noticed something was wrong. And then they began to transform. They had gotten the fire resistance that they had asked for, but at what cost? They transformed into the striders that you see now, wandering the lava of the nether. Some say that they are still searching for a way back to their village to this very day. Hence the name Strider, for they will stride for eternity until they make it home. The source of Minecraft is death. All creatures within the game of Minecraft have some magical source that brings power to them. And what's that power? That's right, it's XP. In order to enchant, you need XP. In order to use anvils, you need XP. Many things in this game require this resource. The most reliable way to find it in this world is by killing things, taking their life energy to gain your own evil advantage. You also gain this magical power from not just living creatures, but by utilizing charcoal from trees or by mining ores as well. But to bring us back to the question of what XP is, we must look at the Illagers. They drop an item that provides both life and magic, just like XP. A Totem of Undying. And what is released when that Totem of Undying is used? A green explosion of particles that looks just like XP. The story behind XP goes back to the Illagers attempting the resurrection of the dead through dark magic. Once the Illagers found out there was a power in experience and utilized it, this is how the creation of the Totem of Undying was brought forth. Due to this discovery, we found the way to live forever. This would explain the nature of Steve, the main character you play as, that has no choice but to respawn over and over again. And with this magical power, he will always come back with the power of XP, gained only from the death of Minecraft's lovable animals and the demise of the world itself. Literally, who knew the scariest entity in Minecraft wasn't Herobrine, not even Entity 303, or the Blood Golem, but you and I. Minecraft's music discs are cursed. Minecraft music, pop in your favorite track and just vibe out to something like this. Sounds nice, right? Or even this. Okay, maybe not that last one. What happened in Minecraft's cursed music discs? Specifically the terrifying discs 11 and 13. Why are so many of the discs happy music while these are just so creepy? And more importantly, what is actually happening while these music discs are playing? Let's start off with disc 13. First off, many people say that 13 is an evil number. I don't personally believe that, but a lot of people think it's true. But as we start listening to this disc, we hear a player in a cave running from a creeper while jumping in water and then getting shot by a skeleton. Nothing much to go off of, right? That is, until you look for the number 13 hidden inside the audio. At exactly 1 minute and 30 seconds into the video, there is this off cut in the sound. And shortly after this, the creeper hisses. 
How long after, you ask? 13 seconds after. And this all happens in a place where there is, you guessed it, 13 different cave sounds. And that is nothing compared to the truly terrifying disc of number 11. It starts out with an intense chase, an out of breath man is running through a cave. He then pulls out a book and begins to frantically flip through and write. And then he runs away on gravel before he gets caught by something that gives me absolute nightmares. No explanation or resolution, just the end of the audio at one minute and 11 seconds. What was the man being chased by? Was it an Enderman? Another player? No, it was Harrowbrine. The man was being chased down the corridor by someone who looked like Steve until he realized he wasn't going to be able to escape. He then stopped to write notes before his final demise. Don't believe me? Well, you're about to get shivers down your spine. I'm gonna play the audio in reverse so you can hear Herobrine for yourself. <laughs> 